Captain Daniel Reyes leaned against the command console of the Elysium, the soft glow of the ship's control panels casting a warm light across his face. Outside the viewport, the vast expanse of space stretched infinitely, a canvas of twinkling stars and swirling nebulas. But within that beauty lay a shadow, one that threatened the very existence of humanity. The Elysium, a cutting-edge warship of the Terran Confederation, had once been an icon of hope and strength. Now, it felt more like a battle-worn relic, its hull scarred from countless skirmishes with alien adversaries. Reyes's mind was heavy with the weight of command. Reports of alien incursions along the outer colonies had surged, and the latest transmission from Outpost Theta-12 had sent a chill down his spine. We're under attack. Request immediate assistance. Status report, Ensign Taurus, he ordered, his voice steady despite the urgency pressing in on him. Torres, a bright-eyed officer with a talent for logistics, peered at the screens before her. We're at full operational capacity, Captain. Weapon systems are primed, shields at maximum. We can jump to Theta-12 in under a minute. Prepare for a jump, but hold on cloaking protocols. We can't let them see us coming, Reyes replied, a plan forming in his mind. He wanted to strike fear into their enemies to remind them why humanity should not be underestimated. As the ship transitioned into warp, Reyes recalled the briefing from earlier that day. The Vrexans, a formidable race known for their brute strength and advanced technology, had forged a coalition with the Lyrians and the Calthar. All three races had their eyes set on Earth's outer territories, believing humanity was weak and ripe for conquest. They had no idea of the technological advancements humanity had made in stealth capabilities. Captain, we're approaching Theta-12. Sensors detect multiple Vrexen ships in the vicinity, Torres reported, her brow furrowed with concentration. Cloak us now. Let's get eyes on the situation, Reyes commanded, his heart pounding in anticipation. He could almost feel the tension in the air, a prelude to the chaos that would soon unfold. The Elysium cloaked itself, its form vanishing from the spectrum of visual and electronic detection. Reyes felt a surge of pride his crew was operating like a well-oiled machine. He looked at the tactical display. There it was Outpost Theta-12, under siege. The Vrexans were unleashing their fury on the facility, their ships darting around like angry hornets. Lock weapons on the nearest enemy ship, Reyes ordered, his voice cold and firm. We're going to give them a wake-up call. Target locked, came Torres's quick response. Weapons primed. On my mark, Reyes said, steeling himself. The mission was simple. Rescue the outpost and show the Vrexans the consequences of underestimating humanity. Three, two, one, fire. The Elysium unleashed a barrage of plasma fire, streaks of blue energy cutting through the dark void, striking the nearest Vrexen ship with devastating precision. The alien vessel erupted in a brilliant explosion, light the darkness. Nice shot, Captain, cheered First Officer Liam Hawk, a burly man with a long history of combat experience. Prepare to decloak and engage, Reyes ordered. The anticipation buzzed within him. This was what he lived for, the thrill of battle, the responsibility of command. As the Elysium decloaked, its imposing silhouette became visible to the alien ships. Rays watched with satisfaction as the Vrexans, caught off guard, began to scatter like roaches in the light. Panic spread through their ranks, chaos erupting where there had been order. Captain, they're attempting to regroup, Torres exclaimed. Let's not give them a chance, Rays said, adrenaline surging through his veins. Target the ship with the most damage. They won't expect us to press the advantage. The crew moved swiftly, executing the orders with precision. The Elysium unleashed another volley, but as Reyes prepared for the next attack, a flicker of hesitation crossed his mind. Why were they so quick to surrender? It didn't make sense. Captain, sensors are picking up a distress signal from the Vrexen flagship, Taurus said, her voice tinged with confusion. They're asking for a ceasefire. What? Reyes blinked in surprise. That's not how they operate. What are they hiding? Before he could process this new development, an alien transmission cut through the comms. A Vrexen commander's voice, laced with fear and desperation, 
echoed across the bridge. We surrender. We, we cannot continue. Please, we seek parley. The crew exchanged glances, disbelief etched on their faces. Rays felt a mixture of caution and curiosity. Why would a race known for its ferocity throw in the towel so easily? Prepare to establish communications, he ordered, though his instincts screamed at him to remain wary. But keep weapons ready. I don't trust them. The Vrexen flagship appeared on the tactical display, its once majestic form now battered and smoke-laden. Rays watched as the ship slowly maneuvered to the Elysium, raising a white flag, a symbol of truce. It was a rare sight in this universe, one that came with heavy implications. Open a channel, Rays commanded, bracing himself for what was to come. The image of the Vrexen commander flickered onto the screen, a tall figure with a reptilian face, scales glistening in the dim light. His eyes were wide with trepidation. Human captain, I am Commander Zarnak of the Vrexen Alliance. We seek peace. The coalition, it has turned against us. Why should I believe you? Rays replied, leaning forward, his gaze unyielding. Our forces were ambushed by the Lyrians during our last engagement, Zarnak continued, his voice filled with urgency. They betrayed us, seeking to eliminate both your people and ours. We have lost countless ships, and now they hunt us. Please, we need an ally. Rays' mind raced. The Vrexens had always been portrayed as the enemy but this revelation changed everything. If the Lyrians were indeed playing both sides, then the Vrexen's surrender might be a lifeline, not just for them, but for humanity as well. Why should I trust you after centuries of conflict, Rays pressed, unable to shake the feeling that this was a trap. Because the enemy of my enemy is my ally, Zarnak replied, his tone resolute. If we do not join forces against the Lyrians, we will both be exterminated. Rays considered the options laid before him. The weight of his decision pressed heavily upon him. To align with the Vrexens could shift the balance of power in the galaxy. But could he trust them? Very well, Commander, Rays finally said, feeling the tension release slightly. I will agree to a temporary alliance. But know this, any sign of treachery, and I will not hesitate to fire. Zarnak nodded, a look of relief washing over him. We will honor your terms. Together, we will take down the Lyrian forces. As the two ships established their temporary alliance, Rays felt a strange sensation, a mingling of hope and dread. This unexpected turn of events had the potential to alter the course of history for both races. But could they forge a future amidst the shadows of betrayal and war? With new purpose, Rays turned to his crew. Prepare to rendezvous with the Vrexen forces. We have a war to win. And as the Elysium glided through the stars alongside its newfound allies, Rays knew that the true battle was just beginning. The fate of not only humanity, but also the galaxy hung in the balance, and they were about to step into the unknown together. As the Elysium and the Vrexen flagship, the Tyrant's Wrath, drifted side by side through the void of space, the weight of their newfound alliance settled heavily on Captain Rays's shoulders, he glanced at the tactical displays, watching the shifting patterns of enemy vessels and their positions. The Lyrians were known for their cunning, and Rays had no doubt they would be preparing for a counterstrike against the Vrexens, especially now that the alliance between humans and their age-old foes had been forged. Captain, Ensign Taurus spoke, breaking his train of thought. We've received data from the Tyrant's Wrath. Their sensors detected a Lyrian fleet moving toward the coordinates of the last known engagement site. They're planning to ambush us. Rays nodded, feeling the familiar thrill of anticipation coursing through him. Let's not give them the satisfaction of catching us off guard. Inform Commander Zarnak that we'll set a trap of our own. If they want to fight, we'll give them one they won't forget. Understood, Captain. Taurus's fingers danced across the console as she relayed orders to their Vrexen counterparts. As they strategized, Rays took a moment to study the crew gathered on the bridge. Each man had their own story, each a reflection of the struggles humanity had faced in its expansion across the stars. From Hawk, who had seen the horrors of war and emerged more resilient, to Taurus, 
who had joined the fleet to escape her mundane life on Earth, every one of them embodied the spirit of humanity's relentless fight for survival. The Elysium and Tyrant's Wrath began their journey to the engagement site. Their combined firepower now aimed at one common enemy. Rays knew this would be a test not only of their capabilities but of their trust in one another. The Vrexans had a history of betrayal, but desperation could sometimes forge unlikely bonds. As they approached the coordinates, Rays ordered the crew to prepare for battle stations. We don't know what we're walking into. Expect the worst, but be ready to adapt, he instructed, his voice steady but commanding. Captain, Torres interjected, we've detected multiple Lyrian ships dropping out of hyperspace. They're on an intercept course. Deploy defensive maneuvers. We'll use the asteroids in the vicinity as cover. Raises heart raced. This was it. The moment they had trained for. Weapons hot. The bridge erupted into a whirlwind of activity as the crew executed the orders. Rays could see the tactical display lighting up with the positions of enemy ships. The Lyrians were sleek and agile, known for their advanced technology that favored speed and deception over brute force. Enemy vessels entering firing range, Torres shouted, her eyes locked on the monitors. They're initiating attack runs. Target their lead ship. We need to take out their command structure to create confusion, Rays ordered. The Elysium shuddered as it unleashed a barrage of plasma bolts, striking the lead Lyrian ship with pinpoint accuracy. The alien vessel erupted in flames, but Rays' relief was short-lived. The remaining Lyrian ships moved swiftly, weaving through the debris, returning fire in a coordinated effort that showcased their military discipline. Shields holding at 70%, Torres reported, urgency in her voice. Reinforce the aft shields and prepare to flank them from the left, Ray shouted. He could feel the tension in the air, the weight of his command bearing down on him. The Vrexans, led by Zarnak, began to engage, their ships launching volleys of missiles into the fray. Rays watched as the tyrant's wrath barreled into the enemy formation, its powerful guns lighting up the darkness. For a moment, it seemed as if the tide of battle had turned in their favor. Captain, one of the Lyrian ships is attempting to break away. They're signaling for a retreat, Torres exclaimed, her fingers flying across the console. Don't let them escape. We need to dismantle their command, Rays ordered, frustration boiling within him. The last thing they needed was for the Lyrians to regroup and plot their next move. Engaging pursuit, Torres replied, her focus unwavering. As the Elysium pursued, Rays' heart raced. But as they closed in, a warning light flashed on the console. Captain, multiple enemy ships emerging from the asteroid field. It's a trap. Raises stomach sank. Get us out of here. Engage emergency thrusters. But it was too late. The Lyrians had anticipated their move, and the ambush erupted around them like a thunderstorm. The Elysium shook violently as enemy fire slammed into their shields. Rays gripped the console, his knuckles white. Shields holding at 50%, Torres shouted, her voice strained with effort. Return fire. Target their weapon systems disable them, Rays yelled, adrenaline surging through him. The crew responded with precision, their training kicking in as they fought against the encroaching doom. But Rays could see the tide turning. They were outnumbered, and the tyrant's wrath was in danger, surrounded by the enemy. Commander Zarnak, you need to fall back, Rays shouted over the chaos. We will not abandon our alliance, human. Zarnak's voice crackled over the comms, defiance ringing through the transmission. We fight together or not at all. As the battle raged on, Rays realized that they had to do something drastic to turn the tide. Ensign, initiate a boarding protocol. We'll take the fight to them. Torres blinked in surprise. Are you sure, Captain? That's incredibly risky. Risky is our only option, Rays declared determination burning in his chest. We'll disable their ships from within. If we can capture one of their command ships, we might gain the upper hand. Understood. Preparing boarding pods, Torres responded, her voice filled with resolve. With swift movements, the crew readied the boarding pods, 
the tension palpable as Ray's prepared to lead the charge. He could feel the weight of his crew's expectations on him, but he refused to falter. They were humanity's last hope against the encroaching darkness, and he would do whatever it took to protect them. The boarding pods shot toward the nearest Lyrian ship, a sleek vessel called the Swift Fang. Rays and his team propelled themselves into the chaos, the sound of explosions echoing around them. As they breached the hull, they were met with resistance Lyrian soldiers, fierce and agile, waiting to defend their territory. Move out, engage, Rays commanded, drawing his sidearm as he charged into the fray. The boarding action erupted into chaos. Rays found himself face to face with a Lyrian soldier, their eyes narrow and predatory. The alien lunged and Rays ducked, using the momentum to counterattack with a well-placed strike. The Lyrian staggered, but others were quickly on his heels. His team fought bravely, humanity's tenacity shining through as they pushed deeper into the enemy ship. Each corridor they cleared, each room they took, brought them closer to the command center. Captain, we're nearly there, one of his crew shouted, adrenaline fueling their resolve. Rays nodded, focusing on the path ahead. They were close. Just as they reached the command center doors, a warning klaxon blared throughout the ship, signaling the imminent destruction of the swift fang. Move, Rays shouted, pushing the doors open. Inside, he found the Lyrian commander, a tall figure with a commanding presence. You will not take this ship, the commander snarled, drawing a weapon as Rays entered. Stand down, this battle is over, Rays demanded, his voice steady despite the chaos outside. But the Lyrian commander only laughed, a cold, calculating sound. You think you can negotiate with me? You are but a fleeting spark against the void. In that moment, Rays understood the true nature of their fight. This was not just a battle for survival. It was a clash of ideals, a struggle for the future of their races. He had to end it here. Then let's see how bright that spark can burn, Rays replied, determination hardening in his heart. As the battle raged on around them, Rays charged forward, prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead, not just for himself, but for the crew who had placed their trust in him. They were humanity's shield against the darkness, and he would not let them down. The air in the command center of the swift fang crackled with tension as Rays faced the Lyrian commander. He could sense the weight of the moment this confrontation could change the course of the war. With a swift motion, the Lyrian commander fired, the energy bolt zipping past Rays and striking the wall behind him. Rays ducked instinctively, rolling to the side as he returned fire, the blast striking the Lyrian's shoulder. The commander staggered but quickly regained his footing his eyes narrowing in rage. You think you can defeat me in my own ship? He spat, his voice laced with venom. I don't need to defeat you, Rays replied, taking aim again. I just need to get my people off this ship alive. Foolish human, your kind will never understand the depths of our power. The Lyrian charged forward, dodging the incoming fire with surprising agility. Rays quickly assessed his surroundings, the command center was a maze of consoles and screens, a chaotic mix of flashing lights and alarms blaring. The crew was still engaged in combat outside, the sounds of battle echoing through the corridors. Fall back. We need to hold this position, one of Reyes's crew yelled, firing at an approaching group of Lyrian soldiers. But Reyes couldn't retreat. He had to put an end to this battle before it spread further. He needed to get control of the command center to turn the tide. The Lyrian commander was fast too fast. Rays realized he needed to think outside the box. Ensign, can you access the ship's control systems? Rays shouted to Torres, who was still battling a Lyrian soldier near the doorway. Working on it, she yelled back, her focus unwavering. Rays nodded, giving her a moment. He needed to distract the commander to buy her time. With a deep breath, he charged forward, firing his sidearm as he did. The Lyrian commander moved with agility, ducking and weaving through the incoming blast. Rays felt the tension in his muscles, the adrenaline pushing him forward. Your weapons are nothing against our technology, the commander taunted, his eyes alight with fervor. Maybe not, 
but that's why we have a surprise for you, Reyes retorted, hoping to buy a few precious seconds. Torres was now focused on the control panel, fingers flying across the keys as she attempted to override the Lyrian systems. Reyes's heart raced as he fought to keep the commander at bay. Prepare to be obliterated, the Lyrian shouted, drawing a second weapon and firing at Reyes. He ducked just in time, the energy blast striking the console behind him, sending sparks flying. Almost there, Torres called, her voice strained with concentration. Reyes took advantage of the momentary distraction. He feigned a retreat, drawing the commander closer to him, and with a surge of resolve, he pivoted and charged. He tackled the commander to the ground, both men grappling for control of the Lyrian's weapons. The struggle felt endless, each second a lifetime as Reyes fought with every ounce of strength he had. The commander was strong, but Reyes had humanity's spirit driving him. With a final effort, he managed to disarm the Lyrian, sending the weapon skittering across the floor. Enough, Reyes shouted, pinning the commander down. Surrender, and we can end this madness. For a moment, the commander's eyes blazed with fury, but then he paused, considering. You think you can bargain with me? You have no idea what you're dealing with. Human, your kind will fall, one way or another. Reyes's grip tightened as he searched for an opening. You're wrong. Humanity is stronger together, and we will not back down. Your race has caused enough pain. Then you will pay the price for your defiance, the commander hissed, struggling beneath Reyes's hold. Just as Reyes was about to press for more answers, Torres's voice rang through the chaos. Captain, I've got control of the systems. Now, Reyes shouted, shifting his weight to keep the commander pinned down as he focused on the control panel. In a flash, the lights in the command center changed from red to green, the alarm silencing as the ship's systems rebooted under Torres's command. Redirect power to the shields and weapons. We need to gain the advantage, Reyes barked adrenaline coursing through him. Torres's fingers danced across the console. Redirecting power now, we can disable the enemy fleet from here. As the command center lit up with new energy, Reyes released the commander just enough to give him a moment to gather himself. The Lyrian snarled, rising to his feet, but hesitating as the ship came alive with the hum of energy. You will regret this, the commander warned, his voice low and menacing. Maybe, Reyes replied, turning to face the displays. But for now, we're in charge. The swift fang shook violently as the combined firepower of the Vrexen and human fleets converged on the remaining Lyrian ships. The tactical display showed enemy vessels scattering, confusion erupting within their ranks as their command structure faltered. Fire at will, Reyes commanded, feeling a surge of triumph. They were finally gaining the upper hand. The swift fang unleashed a torrent of fire upon the nearest Lyrian ships, the energy beams striking true and exploding upon impact. Rays watched as the enemy ships disintegrated, one after another, their coordinated attack collapsing under the pressure of their newfound firepower. Captain, the enemy is breaking formation, Torres exclaimed, her eyes wide with excitement. They're retreating. Don't let them escape, Rays shouted the thrill of victory mingling with the rush of battle. We need to chase them down before they can regroup. As the crew responded, Reyes felt a wave of pride wash over him. They had faced overwhelming odds and emerged victorious, but he knew the fight was far from over. With a swift fang now in their control, Reyes turned to face the Lyrian commander. You're coming with us. You'll help us negotiate a truce. The commander sneered, blood dripping from his wounds. You think I will aid you? You are nothing but a nuisance. Reyes met his gaze, unwavering. No, you are the one who underestimated humanity. We'll make you understand the consequences of your actions. The commander's defiance began to waver, uncertainty creeping into his eyes. You may have won this battle, human, but the war is far from over. Maybe, Reyes replied, determination hardening within him. But I promise you, we will not be silenced. We will fight until the very end. With the Lyrian commander now their prisoner, 
Reyes turned back to the bridge, ready to address his crew. Let's regroup and prepare for what comes next. We've taken the first step, but this is just the beginning. As the Elysium and the Tyrant's Wrath moved closer, Reyes felt a sense of hope. They had faced adversity and come out stronger. But deep down, he understood that the true battle lay ahead. They had to unite not just for their own survival, but for a future where humanity could stand tall among the stars, undaunted and unbroken. As the swift fang gained momentum, moving deeper into enemy territory, I stood at the command center, feeling the weight of the moment. The Lyrian commander, now restrained and sullen, glared at me from the edge of the command console, the anger in his eyes burning brighter than ever. Your crew will pay for this, he spat, the venom in his voice punctuated by the harsh tones of the ship's intercom. Not if we can help it, I replied, my gaze sweeping over the tactical displays. Torres was running diagnostics, her fingers flying over the control panel as she calculated their next moves. We need to exploit this advantage while we can. Advantage? The commander chuckled darkly, the sound laced with contempt. You are still vastly outnumbered. You've merely delayed the inevitable. Ignoring him, I focused on the screens, monitoring the movements of our forces and the remaining Lyrian fleet. We had successfully wrested control of the command center, but the war was far from won. The Lyrians, known for their tactical cunning, would not take this defeat lightly. Captain Reyes, Torres called, her voice cutting through my thoughts. I'm detecting multiple energy signatures on the scanners. It looks like they're regrouping. They'll be ready to retaliate soon. I muttered, my heart racing. We need to gather our forces and prepare for their counterattack. How's the Elysium holding up? They're reporting minimal damage, but they'll need time to recharge their shields, Torres responded, her brow furrowed with concentration. The tyrant's wrath is still operational, but they're spread thin covering the rear flank. We'll have to make a stand then, I declared, resolve washing over me. We can't let them pin us down. Prepare to engage. I, Captain. Torres nodded, her focus shifting back to her console as she relayed commands to the crew. I turned to the Lyrian commander, a cold sense of determination igniting within me. You're going to tell us everything you know about their strategies and plans. Your people will have to rethink their tactics now that we've turned the tables. The commander's expression twisted with defiance, but I saw a flicker of fear. You think you can intimidate me? I will never betray my kind. Suit yourself, I replied, stepping closer. But know this, you're not in a position of power anymore. You'll either help us, or you'll watch your entire fleet fall. Choose wisely. He narrowed his eyes, weighing his options. I could almost see the gears turning in his mind. The Lyrians were fiercely loyal, but they were also pragmatic. If he had any hope of survival, he'd have to play along. Very well, he relented, his voice low. What do you want to know? I leaned in, my voice steady. What are their weaknesses? What can we exploit in their formation? His gaze shifted to the display screens, where our forces were assembling. The Lyrians rely heavily on their centralized command structure. If you can take out their flagship, the rest will fall into disarray. Sounds easy enough, I replied with a grin, my heart pounding with adrenaline. How do we do that? The commander hesitated, weighing his next words. You'll need to bypass their main defenses. Their flagship is equipped with advanced shielding technology. But if you can create a diversion, we can strike while they're distracted, I finished, piecing it together. Torres, can you reroute our cloaking technology? She glanced up, her expression serious. We could mask our approach, but we'll need time to recharge our cloaking field after the last engagement. I looked back at the commander, a spark of inspiration igniting within me. How long do we have before they're fully ready to retaliate? Ten minutes, at most, he replied. They'll be mobilizing their remaining ships, preparing for a coordinated assault. Then we need to act fast, I said, adrenaline surging through me. Taurus, let's set up our diversion. We'll launch an attack on their forward positions to draw their attention. 
Got it, Torres replied, already relaying orders to the crew. The command center buzzed with activity. Each crew member focused on their tasks as we prepared for the impending confrontation. I could feel the tension in the air, the anticipation of battle driving us forward. Commander, I want you to relay the information to your fleet, I said, turning back to the Lyrian. Make sure they know we're coming for them. He hesitated, clearly torn between loyalty and survival. You believe they will listen to me after this? After what we've just done? Yes, I insisted, meeting his gaze. They'll either heed your warning or suffer the consequences. Either way, we'll be ready. With a reluctant nod, he began transmitting orders to the Lyrian fleet, his voice cold and distant. I watched him closely, uncertain of what his true intentions were. Could he be trusted? Ten minutes to intercept, Torres called, her voice steady amid the chaos. We need to move now, Captain. Then let's do this, I replied, adrenaline coursing through my veins. All crew to battle stations. As the swift fang powered forward, I felt a surge of hope. This was our moment to turn the tide, to show the Lyrians that humanity would not back down in the face of overwhelming odds. We moved into position, the ship humming with energy as we prepared for the attack. My heart raced as I considered the stakes we were fighting not just for survival, but for the very future of humanity. Ready on my mark, I shouted, focusing on the displays as the Lyrian flagship came into view, its imposing form silhouetted against the stars. Five seconds, Taurus called, her fingers poised over the controls. Steady, I held my breath, feeling the weight of the moment settle over me. Now, I shouted, and we unleashed a barrage of firepower, a wave of destruction aimed at the heart of the Lyrian fleet. Explosions erupted around us, the shockwaves rattling the swift fang as we tore through the enemy lines. The Lyrians, caught off guard, struggled to regroup, their command structure faltering. Keep pushing forward, I yelled, my voice rising above the chaos. We can't let them regain control. The ship rocked violently as enemy fire struck, alarms blaring throughout the command center. I steadied myself, focusing on the task at hand. Torres, reroute power to the aft shields. We need to hold them off. On it, she shouted, her fingers dancing over the controls. As we surged deeper into the fray, the Lyrian flagship loomed larger on the tactical display. We had to make our move before it could fully engage. Brace for impact, I shouted, feeling the adrenaline rush through me as the ship shuddered again. We need to reach that flagship. With a final push, we barreled through the remnants of the enemy lines, the flagship's weapons beginning to lock onto us. Now, Taurus, I shouted, my heart racing. Cloak us and charge. The ship plunged into the void of space, cloaking technology kicking in as we disappeared from view. I could feel the tension of the crew as we entered the heart of the Lyrian fleet, the commander's presence a cold reminder of the stakes. Captain, the flagship is vulnerable, Taurus called her voice tense with excitement. We can hit it while it's still recovering from our attack. Do it, I ordered, adrenaline coursing through my veins as we plunged into the fray. Activating weapons, Torres shouted, her voice rising above the chaos. With a final surge of energy, we unleashed a devastating barrage on the flagship. The impact shook the ship, the display lighting up with damage reports as the Lyrian flagship began to falter. Prepare to board, I shouted, my heart pounding with anticipation. Ready, Taurus called, adrenaline thrumming through her voice. We plunged through the chaotic battlefield, the Lyrian flagship breaking apart around us as we pressed forward. The commander's defiance had turned to fear, his eyes wide as he watched the destruction unfold. Your kind will pay for this, he spat, but I could see the uncertainty in his eyes. Not if we can help it. I replied, my resolve hardening. With a final push, we breached the flagship's core, a surge of energy coursing through the ship as we prepared for the final confrontation. As the chaos erupted around us, I felt a sense of determination wash over me. This was our moment a chance to show the galaxy that humanity would not back down, that we were a force to be reckoned with. 
With the Lyrian flagship crumbling, I turned to my crew, their faces alight with the thrill of battle. This is just the beginning. We will fight until the end, until we reclaim our future among the stars. As the hull of the Lyrian flagship creaked and groaned under the pressure of our assault, I felt the adrenaline coursing through my veins, fueling my determination. This was a pivotal moment, not just for us, but for humanity as a whole. We were a small fleet against a formidable enemy, but our spirit and resourcefulness were our greatest assets. Captain, we've breached their outer hull, Torres shouted, her fingers flying over her console as she initiated the boarding sequence. The walls of the command center vibrated with the echo of our cannons, resonating in sync with the urgency of our mission. We're preparing to deploy boarding pods. Deploy them, I ordered, my heart racing as I gripped the edge of my command chair. Let's take the fight to them. The boarding pods launched, streaking through the chaotic battlefield towards the crumbling flagship. My mind raced with anticipation as I imagined our crew storming through the corridors of the enemy vessel, determined to seize control. Keep an eye on our flank, I reminded Taurus, who nodded, her focus unwavering. We can't let them retaliate while we're vulnerable. I'm on it, she replied, her voice steady despite the chaos around us. Through the viewport, I caught a glimpse of the boarding pods crashing into the flagship's interior. Explosions erupted, showering the halls with debris as our crew flooded into the ship, their silhouettes outlined against the flames. The tactical display flickered with activity as I monitored the movements of our forces, a mix of anticipation and dread settling in my stomach. We were on the precipice of a significant victory, but I knew the Lyrians wouldn't surrender easily. Suddenly, the ship rocked violently, sending me sprawling against my console. What was that? I shouted, my voice barely audible over the alarms blaring throughout the swift fang. Direct hit from the flagship's remaining weapons, Torres yelled, her fingers moving frantically as she stabilized our systems. Shields are holding, but we need to move fast. Status of the boarding team, I asked, my heart racing as I braced for another impact. They're pushing forward, but resistance is stiff, she reported. They've activated emergency protocols, locking down key sections of the ship. Damn it, I muttered, frustration boiling within me. We can't let them regroup. I need you to send reinforcements. Let's push through their defenses. Sending reinforcements now, Torres replied, her focus unwavering as she coordinated the response. We'll need to establish a secure line before we can proceed to the bridge. The comms crackled with static, and the voice of our first officer, Lieutenant Jansen, broke through. Captain, We've made it to the central control room, but they're deploying security units to stop us. Keep pushing forward, I ordered, my voice rising with urgency. We need to take control of their command center. Understood, Jansen replied, his voice steady despite the chaos. I turned back to Torres, who was monitoring the tactical display with intensity. How's our status? Shields are down to 60%, she replied her brows furrowing. We need to engage their weapon systems to reduce their firepower. Then let's make it happen, I said, determination flooding my voice. Target their weapon control and fire at will. We unleashed a barrage of firepower at the flagship, each blast shaking the hull as we targeted its remaining systems. The ship shuddered under the strain, but we pressed forward, undeterred. Captain, Torres called, her voice urgent. The Lyrians are attempting to reroute power to their engines, if they get away. They won't, I interrupted, steeling myself against the pressure. We have to stop them now. The flagship's engines flared to life, and I felt a sense of urgency wash over me. Prepare to engage their engines directly, I shouted, adrenaline coursing through my veins. As we closed in, the tactical display light with the positions of enemy units. We were nearing a critical moment, and I could feel the weight of the universe pressing down on us. All crew, brace for impact, I called, gripping the edge of my console as we surged forward. Engaging, 
Tora shouted, her fingers dancing over the controls as she unleashed a final volley at the flagship's engines. Explosions erupted across the hull, flames licking at the exposed metal as we pushed forward. The flagship shuddered violently, its power systems flickering as our crew began to make progress inside. Captain, we're breaching their mainframe, Jansen's voice echoed through the comms, excitement mingling with urgency. We're almost there. Push through. We need control of their weapon systems, I urged, feeling the anticipation rise within me. The ship rocked violently again, but this time I felt a surge of hope. We were making progress. Captain, we've secured the central control room, Jansen called, his voice triumphant. We have access to their systems. Good work, Lieutenant, I replied, relief washing over me. Now, shut down their weapons. We need to neutralize any remaining threats. As Jansen relayed the orders, I turned my focus back to the tactical display. The Lyrian fleet was starting to falter, their ships breaking formation as panic spread through their ranks. Captain, Torres shouted, her voice a mixture of urgency and excitement. They're in disarray. We can exploit this. Prepare to launch a full assault, I commanded, my heart racing as I considered our next move. We need to strike while they're vulnerable. As the swift fangs surged forward, I felt a sense of unity among my crew, each one of us fighting for a shared purpose. This was our moment a chance to show the galaxy that humanity was not to be underestimated. Target the nearest ships and fire, I ordered, adrenaline pumping through my veins. The ship responded with precision, our weapons tearing through the Lyrian ranks as we pushed forward. I could feel the thrill of victory surging through me, the weight of our struggle giving way to the excitement of the moment. Captain, we're gaining ground, Taurus shouted, her voice ringing with exhilaration. The Lyrians are breaking. Good, let's finish this, I replied, determination surging through me. As the chaos of battle raged around us, I felt a sense of purpose solidifying within me. We had fought hard for this moment, and now it was time to claim our victory. With renewed vigor, we pressed forward, a unified front against the Lyrian fleet, determined to show them the strength of humanity. This was our fight, and we would emerge victorious. The Lyrian flagship was in disarray, its once imposing structure now a shell of its former self. We had struck hard, and as the chaos enveloped their fleet, I felt an electrifying sense of possibility wash over me. The tide was turning, and we were in control. Captain, Torres exclaimed, her eyes gleaming with excitement as she monitored the tactical display. We're breaking their lines. Several ships are abandoning the fight. Don't let up, I shouted, exhilaration mingling with urgency. We need to capitalize on this. Target their command vessels and fire. On it, she replied, her fingers flying over the controls as we launched a series of devastating shots toward the fleeing Lyrian ships. I watched as our weapons struck true, engulfing enemy vessels in plumes of fire and debris. The once feared Lyrian fleet was faltering, and with each victory, our confidence surged. I could hardly believe it. We were on the brink of an incredible triumph. Jansen, what's the status on the flagship? I asked, eager to learn if our boarding party had managed to seize complete control. We've accessed their mainframe, Jansen's voice crackled through the comms. We're shutting down their systems one by one. They're losing control fast. Excellent work. Keep at it, I replied, my heart pounding with pride in our team. This was our moment to shine, and I wouldn't let it slip away. As we continued our assault, I felt the weight of our struggle press upon me. The Lyrians had been a formidable adversary, but we had proven that humanity was not easily crushed. We fought not just for ourselves, but for the future of our species. But then, as if sensing my thoughts, a chilling silence descended upon the battlefield. Captain, Torres said, her voice suddenly tense. I'm detecting an unusual energy reading from the flagship. It's unlike anything we've seen before. Describe it, I urged, my instincts kicking into high gear. It's a massive surge like they're building up to something. I think they're preparing for a last-ditch effort she warned, 
her fingers racing over the controls. Everyone, brace for impact, I shouted, adrenaline flooding my system. What's their status? Engines are at full power. They're trying to break away, Torres replied, urgency lacing her voice. Not on my watch, I declared, resolve hardening within me. We need to target their engines and disable them before they escape. Firing, Torres responded, and I felt the ship shudder as our weapons unleashed another volley, aimed directly at the flagship's engines. The energy reading continued to climb, a pulsing wave of power that sent a chill down my spine. What the hell are they doing? I muttered under my breath, my instincts screaming that something was terribly wrong. Captain, the flagship is... Jansen's voice cut off suddenly, leaving a haunting silence in its wake. Jansen, report, I shouted, panic rising in my chest. But there was no response. The comms crackled ominously, and my heart raced as I processed the implications. Had they cut off communications? Were they retaliating? Torres, what's happening on the flagship? I demanded, urgency surging through me. I don't know. The readings are fluctuating wildly, she replied, her brows furrowing in concentration. It's like they're channeling energy building up to something massive. Suddenly, a blinding flash erupted from the flagship, light the void around us. I shielded my eyes as the light surged, then felt the ship tremble beneath me. What was that? I shouted, trying to make sense of the chaos. They've released an energy pulse, Torres exclaimed horror creeping into her voice. It's massive. It's going to hit us hard. Reinforce our shields, I commanded, my heart pounding in my chest. Prepare for impact. The ship shuddered violently as the energy pulse hit, a shockwave reverberating through our hull. Alarms blared, and I felt myself being thrown against the command console, pain lancing through my body as the lights flickered ominously. Status report, I shouted struggling to regain my footing. Shields are down to 30%. We've lost auxiliary power, Torres shouted, panic flashing in her eyes. We're vulnerable, Captain. Reassess our systems. Get auxiliary power back online, I ordered, my voice steady despite the chaos around us. As I gripped the edge of my console, I could feel the weight of our situation pressing down on me. We had been so close to victory but now we were facing an unforeseen danger. Captain, the flagship is still operational. They're trying to break through our lines. Jansen's voice crackled back to life, his tone urgent. Engage their engines. We need to disable them before they can escape, I commanded, adrenaline pumping through my veins. We're firing now, Torres responded, her fingers dancing over the controls as she unleashed another barrage at the flagship. I watched as our weapons struck true, engulfing the flagship in flames, but the energy readings continued to climb, a pulsing wave that sent chills down my spine. The Lyrians were not finished yet. Captain, they're deploying a secondary weapon, Torres shouted, her eyes wide with horror. It's a massive energy beam. Brace for impact, I shouted, adrenaline flooding my system as I braced for the worst. The energy beam surged through the void, a blinding light that engulfed everything in its path. I felt a wave of heat wash over us, and then... The ship rocked violently, alarms blaring as the power surged through our systems. The world around me spun, and I felt myself thrown against the command console once more. Status report, I shouted, struggling to regain my bearings. Systems are failing. We're losing power, Torres yelled panic lacing her voice. We need to stabilize our core. Get it back online, I commanded, my heart racing. We can't let them escape. But as I surveyed the battlefield, my stomach dropped. The Lyrian flagship was still standing, its energy readings pulsing ominously as it prepared for another attack. Captain, we need to retreat, Jansen urged, desperation creeping into his voice. We can't keep this up. No, I shouted, anger surging within me. We fight. We show them what humanity is made of. Captain, they're charging another pulse, Torres warned, her voice trembling. Then we strike first, I ordered, adrenaline surging through my veins. 
prepare a concentrated assault, we'll take them down before they can fire again. The ship trembled as we launched a final barrage at the flagship, determination surging through us. This was our chance, our moment to prove that humanity would not back down in the face of overwhelming odds. As the energy readings climbed, I felt a surge of hope wash over me. We were stronger than we had ever been, and together, we would overcome this challenge. Firing now, Taurus shouted, her eyes locked on the tactical display. The energy pulse erupted from our weapons, a brilliant flash of light cutting through the darkness of space. I watched as it struck the flagship, a wave of destruction washing over their hull. Captain, it's working, Jansen yelled, his voice ringing with excitement. They're losing power. Keep firing, I shouted, determination flooding my veins. Let's finish this. The flagship shuddered under the onslaught, its energy readings fluctuating wildly. I could feel the tide of battle shifting in our favor, and a surge of exhilaration filled me. We were on the brink of victory. Captain, the flagship is going dark, Torres exclaimed, her voice a mixture of disbelief and joy. Good, we've got them on the ropes, I shouted, adrenaline coursing through me. As the flagship faltered, I felt a surge of pride in my crew. We had fought hard to get to this moment, and now we would reap the rewards of our determination. Prepare for boarding, I commanded, feeling the rush of victory wash over me. We're taking their ship. With renewed vigor, we surged forward, our spirits soaring as we prepared to claim our victory. The tension in the command room was palpable as we prepared to board the Lyrian flagship, the once proud vessel, now a beleaguered hulk drifting in space, seemed to echo the desperation of its crew. I could see the flickering lights and hear the distant alarms, a haunting reminder of our recent struggle. Boarding parties, are you ready? I called, my voice steady despite the adrenaline surging through my veins. Ready and eager, Captain, Jansen replied, his eyes gleaming with anticipation. We're geared up and waiting for your command. Good. I want a clean sweep. Secure the bridge and the engine room first. We need to access their systems and see what they've been hiding, I ordered, my mind racing with the possibilities. The Lyrians had been a formidable enemy, their technology advanced and their tactics ruthless. But now, with their flagship disabled, we had a chance to uncover their secrets. Let's go, I shouted, leading the charge as we made our way to the airlock. The hum of the ship reverberated beneath our feet, a reminder that we were now on the threshold of our enemy's domain. As the airlock hissed open, I felt a mix of fear and excitement wash over me. The interior of the flagship was dimly lit, shadows dancing across the walls as we stepped inside. My heart raced as I took in the unfamiliar surroundings, the sleek alien architecture unlike anything I had ever seen. Stay sharp, everyone, I warned, my instincts heightened. We don't know what kind of traps they might have set. We moved cautiously through the corridor, our footsteps echoing in the silence. The atmosphere was thick with tension, every sound amplified as we pressed forward. Suddenly, I spotted movement ahead. Contact, I shouted, raising my weapon as I focused on the shadows. Engage. A group of Lyrian soldiers emerged from the darkness, their alien forms silhouetted against the dim light. They were a striking sight tall, with elongated limbs and iridescent skin that shimmered like liquid metal. Take them down, I ordered, adrenaline coursing through me. We opened fire our weapons lighting up the darkness as the Lyrians returned fire. The battle erupted around us, a flurry of movement and sound as we fought to secure our position. I could feel the heat of the blasts, the thud of bodies hitting the floor. It was chaotic, but I felt a sense of clarity amid the chaos, a primal instinct driving me forward. Push through, I shouted, rallying my team as we advanced. We needed to reach the bridge and secure the command of the ship. As we moved deeper into the flagship, I felt the weight of our mission settle heavily on my shoulders. We had to uncover the truth about the Lyrians and their plans for the galaxy. What secrets lay hidden in this forsaken vessel? With every step, the air grew thicker, a sense of foreboding creeping into my mind. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched, 
that the Lyrians had more in store for us than we realized. Captain, Jansen called, snapping me from my thoughts. We need to breach the door to the bridge. I nodded, my determination surging once more. Let's do it. We gathered around the reinforced door, setting up explosives to breach it. I felt a rush of adrenaline as we counted down. Three, two, one, breach. The explosion rocked the door, sending it flying open with a deafening crash. I surged forward, weapon raised, ready to confront whatever awaited us inside. The bridge was a whirlwind of activity, Lyrian crew members scrambling to regain control as we entered. But we were faster, more prepared. Secure the area, I shouted, sweeping the room with my weapon. Don't let anyone escape. We engaged in a fierce firefight, the alien crew desperately trying to repel our assault. I could see their fear and desperation as they realized the tide had turned against them. Captain, I've got access to their systems, Torres shouted from her position at the command console. I'm patching in now. Good. Find out what you can about their plans, I urged, adrenaline fueling my every action. We need to know what they were after. As we fought our way through the bridge, I caught a glimpse of the Lyrian captain, a towering figure with a commanding presence. He fought valiantly, but I could see the desperation in his eyes. Yield, I shouted, raising my weapon at him. You can't win this fight. Surrender, and we can find a way to end this. He hesitated, his gaze darting between his crew and me. I could see the conflict in his expression, fear, anger, and perhaps a flicker of respect. Captain, I'm in, Torres exclaimed, her voice filled with urgency. I've accessed their databases. It's, it's incredible. What are you seeing? I demanded, my attention split between the fight and her revelation. The Lyrians have been stockpiling advanced technology and weapons, she explained, her fingers flying over the controls. But that's not all. They're planning something massive, an invasion of multiple systems. They intended to crush any resistance. My heart sank as the implications of her words washed over me. We had stumbled into a web of deception, a plot that could alter the balance of power in the galaxy. Hold your positions, I shouted to my team as I focused on the captain. We need to know more. What are you planning? The Lyrian captain's expression hardened. We fight for our survival, human. We will not bow to you or your kind. Survival, I countered, my voice steady. You're the ones who attacked us, who sought to destroy us without provocation. Do you think that will lead to a peaceful resolution? He opened his mouth to respond, but before he could speak, Torres interrupted, her voice filled with urgency. Captain, they're activating self-destruct sequences on their ship. Panic surged through me. What? Disable it, I ordered, dread filling my heart. I'm trying, Torres shouted, her fingers racing across the console. But the system is locked. If we don't get it shut down, we'll be caught in the explosion. Everyone, evacuate, I ordered, fear coursing through me. We can't let this ship blow us up. But just as we turned to flee, the Lyrian captain stepped forward, his expression fierce. You have a choice, human. You can destroy us, or you can join us. We can fight together against the true enemy. What do you mean? I demanded, my heart racing as I processed his words. The threat you face is greater than you realize, he said, his tone urgent. There are forces at play in the galaxy that seek to wipe out all sentient life. We are not your enemy. We are fighting to protect our home, just as you fight to protect yours. As the self-destruct countdown ticked down, I felt the weight of his words sink in. Could he be telling the truth? Captain, Torres shouted, panic in her voice. We don't have time. We need to get out of here. I glanced at the Lyrian captain, torn between the desire to protect my crew and the possibility of forming an unexpected alliance. Now, I commanded, my instincts kicking in. We turned and sprinted toward the exit, the ship trembling around us as the countdown reached its final seconds. The Lyrian captain stood his ground, his expression resolute. Humanity has great potential, he called after us. Remember that.
I didn't look back as we raced for the airlock, my heart pounding. The ship shuddered violently, the explosions echoing in the distance. As we launched ourselves into our shuttle, I felt the force of the blast as the Lyrian flagship erupted in a dazzling display of fire and debris. Status report, I shouted, breathless as we lifted away from the chaos. All systems operational, Jansen replied, his eyes wide with awe. But we've got to regroup with the fleet. Let's go, I commanded, determination surging through me. We have to warn them about what we discovered. As we raced back toward our ship, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning. The Lyrians might not be our true enemies, but we had a long way to go before we could uncover the truth. The shuttle shook violently as we navigated through the debris field left by the Lyrian flagship's destruction. I gripped the controls, my knuckles white as I fought to stabilize our course. The view outside was both awe-inspiring and terrifying glimmers of burning metal and twisted remnants of technology lit up the darkness of space, a stark reminder of the battle we had just survived. Hold on tight, I called out, feeling the shuttle shudder beneath us. We need to get clear of this wreckage. Jansen and Torres secured themselves in their seats, eyes fixed on the monitor, as I focused on maneuvering us toward the relative safety of our fleet. The shuttle's engines roared, propelling us away from the chaos, but the image of the Lyrian captain's intense gaze lingered in my mind. Captain, I'm picking up multiple distress signals from the fleet, Torres reported, her fingers dancing over her console. They're in serious trouble. The Lyrians launched a coordinated attack as soon as we left. Damn it, I swore under my breath, the realization striking me hard. The Lyrians had anticipated our actions, and now our fleet was vulnerable without our warning. Can we get a comm link open? I asked, glancing back at Taurus. Working on it, she replied, her focus unwavering. If I can tap into their frequencies, we can warn the fleet before it's too late. Do it fast, I urged, my heart racing. Every second counted. As we sped through the debris, I felt the tension in the air. Jansen, usually so composed, was visibly anxious. What's the situation out there, he asked, peering through the cockpit windows at the distant flashes of energy weapons clashing. We're not sure yet, I replied, my mind racing with possibilities. But we need to be ready for anything. If the Lyrians are willing to risk everything to take us down, we must prepare for a full-scale assault. Captain, I've got a channel open, Torres exclaimed relief flooding her voice. I can transmit a warning. Send it, I commanded, my pulse quickening. Torres activated the comms, her voice clear and authoritative. This is Lieutenant Torres of the Use Bastion. All ships in the vicinity, be advised. The Lyrians are launching a surprise attack. Prepare for combat. I repeat, prepare for combat. I held my breath, waiting for a response. Moments felt like hours as static crackled through the speakers. Then, a voice broke through the chaos. Lieutenant Torres, this is Captain Mitchell of the Use Valor. We copy your warning. Engaging defensive protocols, where is your position? We're en route to your location, Torres replied, relief evident in her tone. We're trying to regroup with the fleet, but we need to hurry. Copy that. We're holding our ground. But it's getting tight out here, Mitchell said, urgency creeping into his voice. We need all available ships to converge on our coordinates. We'll form a defensive line. I nodded, adrenaline coursing through me. Let's get moving, Doris. We need to reach them before it's too late. As I punched in the coordinates, I felt a mixture of fear and determination. This was our chance to turn the tide. If we could regroup and reinforce our fleet, we might stand a chance against the Lyrian onslaught. We accelerated, the shuttle slicing through the remnants of the battlefield. But just as we neared the valor, alarms blared throughout the cockpit. Captain, we've got incoming hostiles, Jansen shouted, pointing to the radar screen, where several blips surged toward us at an alarming speed. Brace for impact, I shouted, yanking the controls to the side. The shuttle jolted as we veered away from the incoming fire, the energy blast barely missing us. Can we outrun them? Jansen asked, 
panic edging into his voice. I'm trying, I replied, adrenaline surging. We can't let them slow us down. We have to reach the valor. Captain, Torres yelled, her eyes wide with fear. They're gaining on us. I pushed the shuttle to its limits, the engine screaming as we surged forward. The cockpit rattled as we dodged incoming fire, the view outside a blur of chaos and destruction. Fifty meters to the Valor's coordinates, I shouted, gritting my teeth. Keep those weapons charged and ready. Ready to fire, Jansen replied, his hands steady on the controls despite the onslaught. As we closed in on the Valor, I could see its silhouette looming ahead, surrounded by smaller ships engaging the Lyrian forces. The sight filled me with hope, but it was quickly overshadowed by the looming threat behind us. Captain, they're preparing to launch boarding parties, Torres warned, her voice tense. We need to get out of here. Hold on, I shouted, executing a hard turn as we entered the fray. The shuttle rocked violently, and I struggled to maintain control. We can't let them capture us. Firing, Jansen announced, unleashing a barrage of return fire. The shuttle shuddered under the impact of the weapons, but we were still moving forward. We're almost there, I urged, desperation fueling my actions. Suddenly, an explosion rocked our shuttle, sending us careening off course. I fought against the controls, heart pounding as I struggled to stabilize us. We've lost power to the aft engines, Torres exclaimed panic rising in her voice. We're going to crash. Not if I can help it, I shouted, my determination surging. I activated the emergency thrusters, pushing us forward even as the alarms blared. With a final surge, we broke through the chaos, slamming into the hangar bay of the Valor. The shuttle screeched to a halt, and I quickly powered down the engines. Everyone out, I shouted, leaping from the cockpit. We scrambled out into the hangar, the sounds of battle echoing in the air. I could see the Valor's crew rallying, preparing for the imminent assault. Captain, a voice called out. It was Captain Mitchell, his expression fierce as he gestured us over. We need to organize our defenses. The Lyrians won't stop until they breach our hull. Let's move, I commanded, adrenaline coursing through my veins as we gathered with the rest of the crew. The atmosphere in the hangar was charged with urgency. Men and women rushed around, securing weapons and coordinating defensive positions. Prepare for boarding, Mitchell shouted, rallying his crew. We can't let them take this ship. If we fall, the entire fleet is at risk. I felt a sense of camaraderie wash over me as I joined my fellow soldiers. We were all in this together, fighting for our survival and the future of our species. As we readied ourselves for the impending assault, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. The battle for our freedom was far from over, and the Lyrians would stop at nothing to claim victory. Captain, I've patched into their comms, Taurus called out, her expression determined. We can track their movements. Good work, Taurus, I replied, my heart racing. Keep us updated on their positions. We need to anticipate their next move. As we prepared for battle, I felt a mixture of fear and determination. We would not go down without a fight. This was our chance to prove ourselves, to show the galaxy the true spirit of humanity. The doors to the hangar rattled as the Lyrians began their assault, and I steeled myself for the fight ahead. We would stand together, united against our common enemy, ready to face whatever came next. The hangar bay trembled as the first impacts rocked the ship. Alarms blared, and the lights flickered overhead, casting eerie shadows across the crew assembled for battle. I scanned the faces around me, each one reflecting a mixture of determination and anxiety. This was it. We had no choice but to defend our home. Listen up, Captain Mitchell shouted, commanding attention with his booming voice. We're about to face the toughest fight of our lives. The Lyrians are relentless, but so are we. Our mission is to protect this ship and our crew. Everyone, take your positions. I nodded, adrenaline surging through me as I moved to my assigned spot beside Jansen and Torres. A weapons cache lay nearby, and I quickly grabbed an energy rifle, feeling its weight settle comfortably in my hands. 
The hum of the weapon was reassuring. Do you think they'll try to board? Jansen asked, glancing toward the reinforced doors that separated us from the impending chaos. Definitely, I replied, taking a deep breath. They'll want to take us alive if they can, but we're not making it easy for them. Torres was already at her console, her fingers flying across the interface. I've got a lock on their incoming boarding crafts. They're coming in fast. Prepare the defenses, Mitchell barked. We need to slow them down before they breach the hull. I took my position near a mounted turret, ready to unleash hell on our attackers. The tension in the air was palpable as we waited, heartbeats synchronized with the countdown of our impending doom. Suddenly, the doors exploded inward, sending shrapnel flying through the air. A group of Lyrian soldiers, clad in sleek, armored suits, poured through the gap. Their reptilian features glinted menacingly in the hangar lights, eyes locked onto us with predatory intent. Open fire, Mitchell commanded, and chaos erupted. I squeezed the trigger of my rifle, the energy blast slicing through the air toward our foes. The first Lyrian fell, but their advance was relentless. Jansen and I worked in tandem, covering each other as we shifted positions, firing at anything that moved. Watch the flank, I shouted, glancing over my shoulder. A group of Lyrians had broken off, attempting to surround us. Torres was still at her station, shouting vital updates. They're breaching the secondary bulkhead. We need to hold them here. Hold the line, Mitchell yelled, rallying the troops. We can't let them gain ground. I ducked behind a nearby crate, feeling the heat of an energy blast whiz past my head. I aimed again, my pulse racing as I took out another Lyrian. But for every one we dropped, two more seemed to take their place. The realization was sobering. We can't keep this up, Jansen shouted, panic creeping into his voice. They're overwhelming us. Stay focused, I barked back. We need to coordinate our fire. We're stronger together. In that moment, I felt the tide beginning to shift. We were a united front, and as long as we held the line, we had a chance. Torres, can you reroute power to the turrets? I called out, hoping to bolster our defenses. On it, she replied, determination etched on her face. I'll boost their output. The turrets word to life, energy beams firing with increased intensity, I watched in satisfaction as the Lyrian soldiers staggered under the onslaught. But then, just as hope began to swell, a massive figure pushed through the chaos a Lyrian commander, towering and armored, with eyes gleaming like molten gold. He surveyed the battlefield with a cold intensity, then fixed his gaze on Mitchell. Human captain, he bellowed, his voice echoing through the hangar. You fight bravely, but your fate is sealed. Surrender now and I promise you a swift end. Mitchell stepped forward, unyielding. You'll have to kill us first. We will never surrender to your kind. The Lyrian commander's lips curled into a snarl. So be it. Your defiance will be your undoing. With a roar, he charged forward, leading his troops deeper into the hangar. I felt my heart race as we prepared for the onslaught. Get ready, I shouted positioning myself to intercept the commander. The clash of energy blasts and the staccato of rifle fire filled the air as the Lyrians advanced, but we were ready. With every Lyrian that fell, I could feel our resolve strengthening. But then, just as we began to push back, the hangar doors shuddered violently and an explosion ripped through the bulkhead. Smoke and debris filled the air, blinding us momentarily. Fall back, Mitchell shouted his voice hoarse over the din. Regroup at the auxiliary defenses. As the smoke cleared, I saw the Lyrians surging forward, their numbers growing. We had to hold the line, but I felt the weight of despair settle in. How could we possibly win this fight? Stay together, I yelled, moving to cover Mitchell as he fell back to regroup. We can't let them breach the command center. Suddenly, Taurus shouted from her console, Captain, I've located an emergency exit. We can use it to flank them. Do it, I urged, adrenaline surging through my veins. We need every advantage we can get. Torres hurriedly mapped out the route, and I relayed the plan to the others.
We're falling back. Follow Torres. We're taking the fight to them. We moved as one, retreating through the smoke and chaos toward the emergency exit. The hangar was a battlefield, filled with the sounds of war, but I felt a renewed sense of purpose. As we reached the emergency exit, I turned back to see the Lyrians advancing, their commander in the lead. The battle was fierce, but our resolve was stronger. Now, I shouted, leading the charge through the exit, prepared to take the fight back to them. We emerged into a narrow corridor, the sound of battle echoing behind us. I could see the faint glow of energy blasts ahead, and I steeled myself for the fight. Let's show them what humanity is made of, I declared, rallying my team as we prepared to engage. We charged into the fray, ready to fight for our lives and our future. As we charged through the narrow corridor, the sounds of battle faded into the background, replaced by the pounding of my heart and the adrenaline surging through my veins. The air was thick with tension, and I could feel the weight of our mission bearing down on us. This was our moment to strike back and reclaim our home. Stay sharp, I called out to Jansen and Torres, leading the way with my rifle raised. We need to find a vantage point to hit them from above. The corridor twisted and turned, leading us deeper into the ship. As we rounded a corner, I caught sight of a small armory door. In here, I shouted, ducking inside. The room was dimly lit but filled with equipment, additional energy rifles, grenades, and combat gear. We quickly armed ourselves, knowing we might not get another chance. Grab what you can, I urged, tossing a grenade to Jansen. We need all the firepower we can get. Torres was already rummaging through the shelves, her eyes brightening as she uncovered a small cache of advanced energy weapons. Look at these, they have better output and are lighter. Perfect, I said, quickly swapping my rifle for one of the new weapons. Let's move before they catch on to us. As we exited the armory, I could hear the distant sounds of battle echoing through the ship. It seemed our defenders were still holding their ground, but for how long? Which way? Jansen asked, glancing at Taurus. Let's go up, she suggested, pointing to a nearby access shaft. If we can get to the upper decks, we'll have a better angle on them. Good thinking, I replied, leading the way toward the shaft. I activated the manual override, and the panel hissed open. In we go. We climbed into the shaft, our bodies pressing against the cool metal walls as we made our way up. The climb was arduous, but we moved with purpose, knowing our comrades were relying on us. Finally, we reached a small access panel on the upper deck. I carefully pried it open, peering out to assess the situation. The view was chaotic, a fierce battle raged on the hangar bay, with Lyrian soldiers pushing against our defenders, their commander bellowing orders amidst the chaos. There, I pointed to a vantage point overlooking the hangar. We can use that to pick them off. We clambered out of the access shaft and took up positions along the edge of the deck. The hangar lay below us, a swirling mass of combatants. I could see Mitchell rallying the crew, coordinating their defenses. Now or never, I murmured, taking a deep breath. I raised my rifle, lining up a shot on the Lyrian commander. On your mark, Jansen said, poised and ready beside me. Three, two, one, now, I shouted, pulling the trigger. The energy beam shot forward, striking the Lyrian commander in the shoulder. He staggered back, fury in his eyes as he turned toward us. I could see the realization dawning on him he was being targeted. Focus fire, I shouted, unleashing a flurry of shots into the Lyrian ranks. My heart raced as I watched several of them drop, chaos erupting as our defenders took advantage of the confusion. Nice shot, Torres yelled, her rifle barking as she joined the fray. Keep it up. We worked together seamlessly, picking off Lyrian soldiers as they scrambled for cover. Each shot felt like a small victory, a step closer to reclaiming our ship. Watch the right, Jansen shouted, and I turned just in time to see a group of Lyrians flanking us. They're trying to get up here. Taurus, cover me, I called out switching my aim as I fired at the approaching soldiers. Jansen, with me. We descended from our perch, 
moving quickly to intercept the incoming Lyrians. I felt the rush of adrenaline, the thrill of battle coursing through me as we engaged in close combat. The corridor narrowed, and I ducked under a Lyrian strike, countering with a swift jab that sent him sprawling. I could see Jansen and Torres holding their own, but the Lyrians were relentless, pouring in from every angle. Fall back, I shouted, motioning for a strategic retreat toward the armory. We need to regroup. We fell back, our feet pounding against the metal floors as we made our way back into the armory. Once inside, I quickly secured the door behind us. Is everyone okay? I asked, catching my breath. Fine, Jansen replied, sweat beating on his forehead. But we can't keep this up forever. Then we need a plan, I said, looking around the armory. There must be something we can use to turn the tide. Torres was already scanning the room, her eyes lighting up as she spotted a stash of grenades. What if we create a diversion? We can set a few explosives near the hangar doors and lure them in. Good thinking, I agreed, my mind racing. If we can draw them away from the command center, we might have a chance to regroup with the rest of our forces. We quickly gathered the explosives and made our way back to the hangar bay, hearts pounding with the weight of our plan. As we approached, the sounds of battle grew louder, and I could see Lyrians beginning to swarm the area. On my mark, I whispered, raising my weapon. Ready, Jansen said, tension lacing his voice. I glanced at Torres, who nodded firmly. Let's do this. With a deep breath, I stepped into the open, raising my rifle and firing at the nearest group of Lyrians. The chaos erupted instantly. Over here, I shouted, drawing their attention away from the door. Come and get us. The Lyrians turned, their eyes narrowing as they focused on our position. I could see the commander rallying his troops, urging them to attack. Now, I yelled, throwing the explosives toward the hangar doors. The grenades detonated with a deafening roar, sending debris flying and creating a cloud of smoke. Go, 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 I shouted, leading Jansen and Torres back toward the command center. We sprinted through the smoke, adrenaline pushing us forward. I could hear the Lyrians shouting in confusion, their focus divided as they dealt with the chaos we had created. Into the command center, I barked, guiding us through the threshold. Once inside, I slammed the door shut behind us, my heart racing. We need to secure this area, I commanded, scanning the room for any signs of our comrades. Captain Mitchell, I called out, hoping he was nearby. I'm here, Mitchell's voice came from the shadows, and he stepped into view, weary but resolute. What's the situation? We've created a diversion, I explained, catching my breath. But we need to regroup and organize our defenses. The Lyrians won't be far behind. Mitchell nodded, his expression grim. We're holding our ground, but we need to push back. If we don't regain control, we'll be overwhelmed. Then let's take the fight to them, I declared, feeling a renewed sense of determination. We need to show them we're not going down without a fight. The crew gathered around, ready for the next step. We would fight back, not just for our ship, but for our very survival. Everyone, gear up, Mitchell ordered. We're going to break their lines and take the fight to their commander. If we can eliminate him, we might just turn the tide. As the crew prepared for battle, I felt the weight of our mission settle over me. We were on the brink of something monumental, and I would fight to the end to protect my comrades and my home. Let's do this, I shouted, rallying everyone as we prepared to face the Lyrian threat head-on. The atmosphere inside the command center crackled with tension as we gathered our weapons and gear. The plan was simple, breach the hangar, take out the Lyrian commander, and destabilize their forces but simplicity often masks the complexities of battle, and I could feel the weight of that truth pressing down on us. Is everyone ready? Mitchell's voice cut through the noise, and I nodded, sharing determined glances with Jansen and Torres. Let's end this, I replied, gripping my rifle tightly. The energy pulsed beneath my fingers, a comforting reminder of the power we wielded. Mitchell led the way, pushing open the command center doors. We stepped into the chaos of the hangar, 
the clamor of battle echoing all around us. The air was thick with the smell of burnt metal and scorched flesh, the flickering lights casting eerie shadows across the scene. Stay low, I hissed, crouching behind a stack of crates. We need to find cover before we make our move. The hangar was alive with combat Lyrian soldiers darted from cover to cover, engaging our defenders in a brutal skirmish. I could see the commander, a tall figure with a distinctive crest, barking orders to his troops. He was our target, and taking him out would send a ripple through their ranks. On my mark, we pushed to that left flank, Mitchell instructed, pointing to a gap in the enemy formation. We need to reach that raised platform for a better vantage point. Understood, I confirmed, scanning the area for any signs of weakness in the Lyrian defenses. Three, two, one, go, Mitchell yelled, and we surged forward, weaving through the chaos as we made our way to the left flank. I felt the rush of adrenaline as we moved, the sounds of battle becoming a distant hum. We reached the edge of the platform, finding a moment of cover behind a large piece of machinery. Okay, we're almost there, I whispered, peering out to assess the situation. The Lyrians were in disarray, their attention divided between the ongoing skirmish and the explosions from earlier. Now's our chance, Taurus exclaimed, spotting an opening. Let's move. With a nod, we sprinted toward the platform, dodging enemy fire as we closed in on our goal. Just as we reached the edge, a blast erupted nearby, throwing me to the ground. Damn it, I cursed, scrambling back to my feet. Are you okay? Jansen asked, checking for injuries. I'm fine, just a little bruised, I replied, shaking off the shock. Let's keep moving. We climbed onto the platform, finding a strategic vantage point overlooking the chaos below. The Lyrian commander was still barking orders, but now he was vulnerable, his back turned to us as he rallied his troops. Got him in my sights, I whispered, steadying my rifle as I focused on the commander. Just need one clean shot. Take it, Mitchell urged, positioning himself beside me. We'll cover you. I took a deep breath, narrowing my focus on the commander. The tension in the air seemed to pulse around us, and I could feel my heart racing. Hold still, you bastard, I muttered, aligning the crosshairs with his head. Now, Mitchell shouted suddenly, and I pulled the trigger without thinking. The energy beam shot forward, striking the commander squarely in the back. He stumbled forward, shock replacing the determination on his face as he crumpled to the ground. A moment of silence swept through the hangar, as if time itself had paused. Did it work? I asked, my heart pounding. The Lyrians hesitated, confusion rippling through their ranks. They looked to their fallen commander, then back to our forces. Push forward, Mitchell bellowed, rallying our defenders. Now's our chance. The shout seemed to break the spell. Our forces surged, pressing forward with renewed vigor as they fought through the remaining Lyrian soldiers. The tide was turning, and the Lyrians were starting to falter. Let's finish this, I roared, joining the fray as we leaped off the platform and into the thick of battle. We fought with a newfound ferocity, every strike fueled by the knowledge that we were reclaiming our home. The Lyrians were scrambling now, their formation breaking, as they realized their commander was down. Don't let up, Jansen shouted taking out a soldier with a precise shot. I moved through the chaos, my rifle firing in bursts as I engaged enemy after enemy. The cries of battle echoed around me, but amidst the chaos, I felt a strange sense of calm. We were winning. But as the Lyrians began to retreat, I caught a glimpse of something that sent a shiver down my spine. A larger Lyrian soldier, standing apart from the chaos, was barking orders at the remaining troops. His presence was commanding, and I knew we couldn't let him escape. There, I yelled, pointing him out to Mitchell. We can't let him get away. On it, Mitchell replied, motioning for Jansen and Taurus to follow. We pushed through the crowd, dodging energy blasts and debris as we made our way toward the Lyrian commander. He was moving with a surprising speed, rallying the remaining soldiers around him. Cut him off, I shouted my heart racing as we closed the distance. But the Lyrian soldiers were fighting back, desperate to protect their leader. 
I fired, taking out two soldiers in quick succession, but the remaining ones were closing ranks. Watch out, Torres yelled, grabbing my arm just as a Lyrian soldier lunged at me. I sidestepped, twisting away from the attack and countering with a swift strike that sent the soldier sprawling. Thanks, I shouted, but there was no time to dwell on it. We had to reach the commander before he could escape. Keep moving, Mitchell yelled, pushing through the crowd. We surged forward, adrenaline fueling our every move. The Lyrian commander was just ahead, rallying his troops as they prepared to make a stand. Now, I shouted, raising my weapon and firing at the commander. The shot struck him in the shoulder, and he howled in pain, staggering backward. Go, 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 Jansen shouted, rushing forward to engage the remaining soldiers. I followed, determination surging through me as we closed the distance. The commander was wounded, but he wasn't finished yet. He glared at us, fury blazing in his eyes. You think you can defeat us? You're nothing but insects, he spat, raising his weapon to fire. But I was quicker. I aimed carefully, squeezing the trigger. The energy beam hit him square in the chest, and he fell to the ground with a final, defiant roar. The Lyrian forces froze, disbelief washing over them as their leader crumpled to the floor. Now, push them back, Mitchell shouted, seizing the moment to rally our troops. Our forces surged forward pressing the advantage as the Lyrians began to scatter. The tide of battle had turned, and victory was within our grasp. But as I fought through the chaos, I couldn't shake the feeling that this battle was just the beginning. The Lyrians were formidable foes, and they would not give up easily. As the last of the Lyrian soldiers fell, I took a moment to catch my breath. We had reclaimed the hangar, but at what cost? The fight had left scars on our ship and our crew, and we would need to regroup and heal before facing whatever lay ahead. Great job, team, Mitchell called out, his voice cutting through the din of battle. Now we need to find a way to end this for good, I replied, my gaze scanning the hangar. We can't let them regroup. We'll figure it out, Jansen said, clapping me on the back. Together, we'll finish this. We gathered in the dimly lit command center, the air thick with the aftermath of our hard-fought battle. The hum of machinery and the distant sound of repair crews echoed around us as we regrouped. I glanced at my comrades Mitchell, Jansen, and Torres. Each face bore the marks of exhaustion, yet a shared sense of purpose shone through. We need to strike while the iron is hot, Mitchell began, leaning against the console, his voice steady despite the chaos around us. We've taken out their commander and scattered their forces, but we can't let them regroup. We need to cut the head off the snake. I nodded, feeling the weight of the moment. Agreed. If we can find their command ship, we can disrupt their entire operation. But we need intel first. Let's check the Lyrian databases, Jansen suggested, his fingers dancing over the console. They might have recorded the movements of their ships and reinforcements. As Jansen worked, I felt a sense of unease creeping in. We had won this battle, but the war felt far from over. The Lyrians were not a race to be underestimated. Their resilience had shown in the heat of combat, and they would not easily surrender. There, Jansen exclaimed, his voice breaking through my thoughts. I found their command ship's coordinates. It's a small cruiser, heavily shielded, but we can get in. Mitchell straightened, a fierce determination in his eyes. Let's assemble a strike team. We'll take the cruiser before they can reinforce their position. Count me in, I said, adrenaline surging as the plan took shape. We've come too far to let this slip through our fingers. Mitchell assigned roles quickly. Torres, you're on tech hacking into their systems. Jansen, you'll provide cover fire, and I'll lead the charge. We'll breach the cruiser take out their command staff, and disable their ability to fight back. With a nod, we geared up, arming ourselves with weapons and equipment. As we made our way to the hangar, the reality of what lay ahead settled in. This would be our most dangerous mission yet, but failure was not an option. The hangar doors opened, revealing our ship the Endeavor. Its sleek design was a testament to human ingenuity, and as we boarded, 
I felt a renewed sense of purpose. We were not just fighting for ourselves, we were fighting for humanity's place in the galaxy. As we powered up the ship, Torres worked diligently at his station. I'm prepping the stealth systems. We'll need to slip past their outer defenses. Good, Mitchell replied, his voice calm and collected. Once we're in, we'll have to move quickly. The longer we stay, the more likely they'll call for backup. The ship hummed to life, and I settled into the pilot's seat, my fingers dancing over the controls. Engaging stealth mode now. The endeavor shimmered as our cloaking technology activated, rendering us nearly invisible to enemy sensors. We glided through the hangar, and with a final burst of speed, we shot into the void of space. Coordinates set, Jansen confirmed, his eyes focused on the readouts. We'll be in firing range in three minutes. As we approached the Lyrian cruiser, I felt a mixture of anticipation and dread. The ship loomed ahead, its dark hull bristling with weaponry. If we were going to do this, we needed to be swift and precise. Stealth systems holding, Torres reported, his voice steady. They don't seem to have detected us. Perfect, Mitchell replied. We'll make our move once we're within range. Prepare for breaching, I said, my heart racing as we drew closer. The cruiser's defenses came into view turrets and missile launchers scanning the empty space around them. Hold on, I shouted as I pulled the ship into a sharp dive, evading the targeting systems just as they began to activate. The cruiser's crew scrambled, but it was too late. Now, I yelled, slamming the ship's weapons controls. Energy bolts streaked from our ship, striking the cruiser's shields. Turrets disabled, Torres reported his fingers flying over the console. We have a clear shot at the hangar bay. Good, prepare to breach. I maneuvered the Endeavor into position, aligning us with the cruiser's hangar. With a swift flick of the switch, I initiated the boarding sequence. The ship's doors slid open, revealing the dark interior of the cruiser. Let's move, Mitchell shouted, and we surged forward, weapons drawn and adrenaline pumping. We stepped into the hangar, the air thick with tension. I scanned the area, spotting a handful of startled Lyrian soldiers rushing for cover. Engage, I yelled, firing at the nearest soldier as chaos erupted around us. Energy beams flew through the air, and a sound of blaster fire echoed in the enclosed space. I ducked behind a stack of crates, taking cover as our team pushed deeper into the cruiser. We need to find their command center, I shouted, scanning for any signs of direction. Torres moved beside me, his face focused. This way, he pointed toward a corridor leading deeper into the ship. We moved swiftly, cutting down any Lyrian soldiers in our path. The cruiser's interior was a maze of dark corridors and flickering lights, but we pressed on, determined to reach our objective. As we approached the command center, I felt the tension in the air intensify. This was it our chance to strike a decisive blow against the Lyrian forces. On my mark, Mitchell whispered, his eyes narrowing as we neared the door. I readied my weapon, adrenaline coursing through my veins. The door slid open, and we burst into the command center, weapons raised. Lyrian officers stood at their consoles, shock plastered across their faces. They scrambled to react but we were faster. Drop your weapons, Mitchell commanded, his voice booming. The Lyrians hesitated, and I could see the conflict in their eyes. They were warriors, but they were also facing the reality of their situation. Do it, Jansen urged, his rifle trained on the nearest officer. One by one, the Lyrian officers dropped their weapons, surrendering to our might. I felt a rush of triumph, knowing we had turned the tide in this battle. Secure the area, Mitchell barked, and we moved to disarm the remaining Lyrian soldiers, ensuring they couldn't retaliate. As we began to secure the command center, I took a moment to breathe. We had struck a decisive blow, but the reality of what lay ahead still loomed. Torres, can you access their systems? I asked, urgency creeping into my voice. On it, he replied, fingers flying over the console. I'll send a distress signal to our fleet and shut down their communications. As he worked, 
I felt a sense of unease creeping in. We had won this battle, but the war was far from over. Done, Taurus announced, his voice filled with triumph. I've sent out our signal and jammed their communications. They won't be able to call for reinforcements. Great work, I said, relief flooding through me. Now, let's finish this, Mitchell urged. We need to secure the ship and ensure it doesn't fall into enemy hands again. As we prepared to make our exit, the door burst open and a squad of Lyrian soldiers charged into the room, weapons drawn. Fight, Mitchell shouted, raising his rifle. A fierce battle erupted, energy beams clashing in a brilliant display of power. We fought with everything we had, fueled by the knowledge that victory was within our grasp. But as the battle raged on, I noticed something strange. The Lyrian soldiers were fighting with an unexpected ferocity, and I realized they were not just fighting for their commander, they were fighting for their survival. With renewed determination, I pushed forward, firing at the Lyrian soldiers with deadly precision. We fought as a unit, coordinating our movements as we pushed them back. And then, just as quickly as it began, the battle turned. The Lyrian soldiers began to falter, and one by one, they dropped their weapons, surrendering to our might. Breathing heavily, I lowered my weapon, scanning the room for any remaining threats. Stand down, Mitchell commanded, and the remaining Lyrian soldiers dropped their weapons, raising their hands in surrender. Nice work, team, I said, allowing myself a moment of relief. But as we began to secure the area, I couldn't shake the feeling that the fight wasn't over. The Lyrians were resilient, and they would regroup. We needed to send a message. Let's take their command ship and return to the fleet, Mitchell said, his eyes filled with determination. We'll make sure they know humanity is not to be trifled with. As we prepared to leave the command center, I felt a surge of hope. We had fought valiantly, and together, we had turned the tide. But deep down, I knew that the real battle lay ahead. The Lyrians may have surrendered today, but the war was far from over. With one final glance at the fallen Lyrian commander, I steeled myself for whatever lay ahead. We were humanity, and we would rise to meet the challenge. With the Lyrian command ship now firmly in our control, we secured the command center and prepared to gather intelligence on the Lyrian war machine. As we moved through the dimly lit corridors, I felt a mix of triumph and caution. We had achieved a significant victory, but I knew this was only the beginning. Let's gather what we can before the rest of their forces catch on, Mitchell urged as we moved through the ship. Torres, can you download their fleet movements? Already on it, Torres replied, his fingers tapping away at a console, a faint blue glow light his face. I'll access their databases and compile anything relevant. We need to know what we're up against. Good. We can use this information to plan our next steps, I said, glancing around the command center. The stark metal walls felt cold and unyielding, a reminder of the Lyrian's militaristic culture. As Torres worked, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The Lyrian officers had surrendered quickly, but I still sensed an undercurrent of tension. They were a proud race. They wouldn't give up without a fight. Jansen, keep an eye on our perimeter, Mitchell instructed. We can't afford any surprises right now. On it, Jansen replied, moving to a vantage point near the door. He adjusted his weapon, scanning the corridor for any signs of movement. I took a deep breath, willing my heart to steady. We had come so far, and there was no turning back now. As I looked at my comrades, I felt a sense of camaraderie. We were more than just a crew. We were a family bound by our shared experiences and goals. Done, Torres announced, breaking the tension. I've got the fleet movements and their supply routes. We can hit them hard if we play our cards right. Excellent work, Mitchell said, a hint of pride in his voice. Let's see what we're up against. Torres pulled up the data on the main screen. Maps and figures flashed across the display, detailing the locations of Lyrian ships and their supply lines. My mind raced as I processed the information. Look at this, Taurus said, pointing to a cluster of ships gathered near a planet on the edge of Lyrian space. They're stockpiling resources here, 
If we strike fast, we can disrupt their supply chain. Mitchell nodded, a glint of determination in his eyes. We need to act quickly. If we can hit them while they're vulnerable, we might be able to turn the tide of the war. As we formulated a plan, I felt a sense of urgency growing within me. The Lyrians would not sit idly by as we disrupted their operations. They would retaliate, and we needed to be prepared. Let's get back to the endeavor, I said, my voice firm. We need to set course for that supply point and execute our strike before they can regroup. As we made our way back through the cruiser, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. The corridors felt narrower, the shadows deeper, and I sensed we were being watched. Suddenly, alarms blared, piercing through the tense atmosphere. Red lights flashed around us, and the ship trembled under our feet. What the hell is happening? I shouted, adrenaline surging through my veins. The Lyrians are initiating self-destruct protocols, Torres exclaimed, panic rising in his voice. We need to get out of here now. Move, Mitchell commanded, urgency lacing his tone. We'll head for the hangar. Jansen, cover our rear. We sprinted down the corridor, the alarms blaring in our ears. The walls trembled as the ship prepared to detonate and I could hear the sound of Lyrian soldiers closing in behind us. Go, 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 I shouted, adrenaline propelling us forward. We rounded the corner, and I caught a glimpse of the hangar ahead. Our ship, the Endeavor, stood waiting, but the Lyrians were hot on our heels. Cover us, Mitchell yelled, spinning around to fire at the pursuing soldiers. Energy beams whizzed past us, and I could feel the heat of the blast on my skin. I raised my weapon, firing at the nearest Lyrian soldier, my heart racing as the combat surged around us. We were so close, yet it felt like the distance stretched on forever. Almost there, Jansen shouted, his voice rising above the chaos. With a final burst of speed, we dashed into the hangar. I could see the Endeavor's hatch opening, welcoming us home. Get in, I yelled, urgency pushing me forward. Torres was the first to leap aboard, and I followed closely behind, diving into the cockpit. I quickly engaged the ship's systems, ready to take off at a moment's notice. Strap in, I called to the others, adrenaline coursing through me as I initiated the pre-flight sequence. Mitchell slid into the seat beside me, his eyes locked on the hangar doors. Hurry, we don't have much time. Engaging thrusters now, I shouted my fingers flying over the controls as the engines roared to life. Just as the hangar doors began to close, I punched the throttle, feeling the endeavor surge forward. We shot out of the hangar, narrowly escaping the clutches of destruction. The cruiser erupted behind us in a brilliant display of light and energy, flames licking at the darkness of space. I felt a surge of triumph, but it was quickly tempered by the reality of our situation. We made it, Jansen said, a breathless smile on his face. But Mitchell's expression was grim. This was just a distraction. They won't let us go easily. Agreed, I said, my eyes scanning the radar. We need to set course for the supply point and regroup with the fleet. As I plotted our course, a sense of urgency filled the cockpit. The Lyrians were not finished yet. They would be coming for us, and we needed to be ready. Let's move, I said, determination hardening my resolve. We're going to make sure this war is ours to win. As the endeavor surged through the vastness of space, I felt a mix of exhilaration and dread. We had escaped the Lyrian command ship just in time, but I knew this was far from over. The Lyrians were relentless, and they would be hunting us down, desperate to reclaim their lost ship and exact their revenge. Plotting a direct course to the supply point now, I announced, my fingers flying over the controls. The star charts flickered on the display, showing our destination a barren planet on the outskirts of Lyrian space, rich in resources but heavily guarded. Let's hope the fleet is ready for us, Mitchell said, his voice steady despite the tension. We need all the firepower we can muster. Agreed, I replied, my mind racing. The intel we'd gathered could turn the tide of the war but we needed to execute our plan with precision. I'll send a transmission to the fleet once we're in range. As we flew deeper into Lyrian territory, 
the atmosphere in the cockpit grew heavier. Each of us knew the stakes. We were about to walk into the lion's den. But there was no turning back now. We'll be at the supply point in fifteen minutes, I announced, trying to keep my voice steady. Prepare for potential contact with enemy vessels. Then let's make it count, Mitchell said, a fierce glint in his eye. We're fighting for our survival, and we can't afford to be careless. I nodded, feeling the weight of responsibility settle on my shoulders. Every decision I made could mean life or death for my crew. As we approached the supply point, I could see the planet looming ahead, a barren rock pockmarked with craters. Visual contact with the supply depot, I announced, my pulse quickening. Looks like a small fleet is already assembled. We need to time our approach perfectly. Ready the weapons, Mitchell ordered, his voice low and intense. We'll engage as soon as we drop out of warp. Engaging deceleration now, I said, my fingers deftly adjusting the controls. The stars blurred outside as we slowed, the surface of the planet coming into sharp focus. Prepare for evasive maneuvers, Jansen warned his eyes locked on the scanners. I'm picking up several Lyrian ships entering our vicinity. Hold steady, I replied, adrenaline surging through me. We'll initiate our attack plan as soon as we drop into range. As we exited warp, the cockpit erupted into chaos. Red lights flashed, and the ship shook violently as enemy fire erupted around us. Shields at 70 percent, Torres yelled his voice filled with urgency. They're on to us. Return fire, Mitchell commanded, his voice steady. Focus on their lead ship. I maneuvered the endeavor with precision, weaving between enemy fire as I targeted the closest Lyrian vessel. Energy bolts flashed past us, and I felt the tension in the air as we fought for our lives. Locking on, I shouted, firing our cannons at the lead Lyrian ship. The energy beams connected with a resounding explosion, and I felt a rush of triumph as the ship began to break apart. Nice shot, Jansen cheered, but there was no time for celebration. The remaining Lyrian ships were closing in, and we were outnumbered. Keep them off our tail, I barked, my heart pounding as I initiated evasive maneuvers. The ship bucked beneath me, and I gripped the controls tightly, determined to keep us alive. As we fought, I could see the Lyrian supply depot below, a sprawling complex brimming with resources. We needed to destroy it to cripple their war effort, but we had to survive first. Torres, can you access their systems from here? Mitchell asked, his eyes scanning the display for intel. I'll try, Torres replied, focusing on his console. If I can get into their network, I might be able to trigger the supply depot's self-destruct. Do it, I urged, my pulse racing. We need a way to slow them down. With a sense of urgency, Torres worked to breach the Lyrian network, his fingers flying over the console. The sounds of battle raged around us, but I kept my focus on the enemy ships closing in. Come on, come on, Torres muttered under his breath, frustration creeping into his voice. I'm almost in. Suddenly, a blaring alarm cut through the cockpit. Shields at 50%, Jansen shouted, sweat beating on his forehead. We can't take much more of this. Hang in there, I gritted my teeth, firing at another approaching Lyrian ship. The energy beams hit their mark, and I felt a rush of adrenaline as another vessel exploded into fiery debris. Got it, Torres exclaimed, his voice rising above the chaos. I'm in their systems initiating self-destruct for the supply depot now. Excellent work, Mitchell said, his voice steady as he fired at another enemy ship. We need to keep them distracted while Torres finishes this. The battle raged on, but I felt a surge of hope. If we could destroy the depot, we might have a chance to regroup and plan our next move. Self-destruct initiated, Torres shouted, his fingers flying over the controls. We've got ten minutes until it goes off. 
Let's make sure we're clear before that happens, I said, my voice steady. Jansen, focus on those ships at R6. On it, Jansen replied, firing back at the Lyrians as they closed in. The atmosphere in the cockpit crackled with tension. We were outnumbered, but we had to keep fighting. Our survival depended on it. More ships incoming, Jansen warned, his eyes wide. We've got company. I felt a knot of dread in my stomach. The Lyrians were relentless, and they wouldn't stop until we were destroyed. But we had the upper hand now. We just had to hold out long enough to escape. Torres, can you send a distress signal to the fleet? I asked, my voice steady despite the chaos around us. I'll try, he replied, his brow furrowed in concentration. But we'll need to be quick. As we fought off the encroaching ships, I felt a surge of determination. We were humanity's last hope against the Lyrian menace, and we couldn't let fear dictate our actions. Let's finish this, I said, my voice steady. We fight for our future. The battle raged around us, the chaos of the Lyrian fleet pressing in like a vice. The explosions of our cannons light the dark void of space, but the relentless onslaught of enemy fire made it clear that our victory was not guaranteed. Hold steady, I shouted, feeling the ship lurch beneath me as another wave of blasts impacted our shields. Jansen, keep those turrets firing. Trying, but they just keep coming, Jansen replied, his voice laced with tension. He focused on the controls, directing our rear-facing turrets to pick off the nearest enemy ships. Torres, any luck with that distress signal? I asked my heart racing as I maneuvered the endeavor to evade incoming fire. I'm working on it, Torres replied, his brow furrowing as he tapped furiously at his console. I need just a few more seconds. Make it quick, Mitchell added, his eyes narrowed as he fired at a Lyrian ship that was trying to flank us. The ship exploded in a brilliant flash, but we were far from out of danger. With a deep breath, I focused on the screen ahead, the supply depot was looming closer, its metallic surface glinting in the light of the nearby stars. We needed to take down as many of these Lyrian ships as possible before the depot detonated. Less than eight minutes until the supply depot goes up, Torres announced, his voice strained. But we need to keep the pressure on them. Let's push them back, I yelled, my heart pounding. Torres, you've got to send that signal. We need reinforcements. I'm almost in, he shouted, and I felt a flicker of hope. If we could hold out just a little longer, we might be able to turn this battle around. I spun the ship, dodging another barrage of incoming fire as we approached the supply depot. The sounds of explosions and the hum of the ship's engines filled the cockpit, drowning out everything else. Taurus, I urged, feeling the tension in the air. We need that signal. Done. Sending now, he replied, and a moment later, the familiar beeping of a successful transmission filled the cockpit. Distress signal is out. Fleet should be on their way. Good, Mitchell called. Let's give them something to work with. With a renewed sense of determination, I pushed the endeavor into a daring maneuver, thrusting us directly toward the enemy ships. Engaging full weapon systems, I shouted, my fingers dancing over the controls. Let's give them everything we've got. We unleashed a torrent of fire, energy beams lighting up the darkness as we targeted the nearest Lyrian ships. The cockpit shook with each blast, the sound of impacts echoing around us. Direct hit, Jansen cheered, a hint of relief in his voice. That one's going down. But just as we celebrated a minor victory, a warning light flashed on the console. Multiple ships approaching from our port side, Torres yelled, panic creeping into his tone. They're flanking us. Brace for impact, I shouted, spinning the ship to face the incoming threat. The endeavor shuddered as enemy fire rained down, striking our shields with brutal force. Shields at 30%, Jansen shouted, his voice filled with urgency. We can't take much more of this. Focus on the ships in front, I commanded, feeling the adrenaline pumping through my veins. If we can clear a path, we can get to that depot. I maneuvered the endeavor with precision, 
my heart racing as I evaded incoming blast and returned fire. One by one, Lyrian ships began to fall, but their numbers were overwhelming. Five minutes until the depot goes up, Taurus called, his fingers flying over the controls as he tried to access the Lyrian systems again. We need to keep pushing. More reinforcements incoming, Jansen shouted, his eyes wide. Looks like our fleet is finally responding. I felt a surge of hope. Let's hold the line until they arrive, I yelled. We can't let the Lyrians know we're vulnerable. The cockpit vibrated with energy blast as we pressed forward, determined to hold our ground. The tide of battle began to shift as our fleet's ships came into view, joining the fray with a vengeance. Here they come, Mitchell shouted, his voice filled with excitement. Our boys are here to back us up. I felt a rush of relief wash over me as I saw our fleet join the fight. The Lyrians were caught off guard, and we seized the opportunity to strike harder and faster. Let's turn the tide, I yelled, exhilaration coursing through me. Keep firing. The battle intensified, the air crackling with energy as our ships formed a united front. I could see the Lyrian ships falter, their lines breaking under the pressure of our combined firepower. Three minutes until the depot detonates, Torres warned, urgency filling his voice. We need to make sure we're clear. Pull back slightly, I ordered, trying to gauge the position of the depot. We don't want to be caught in the blast. We repositioned the endeavor, carefully placing ourselves at a safe distance while continuing to provide support fire. I could feel the tension in the air as we prepared for the final act. Let's finish this, Mitchell said, a fierce determination in his eyes. We've come too far to back down now. As the countdown continued, I felt a surge of anticipation. The Lyrians were disoriented, their numbers dwindling as our fleet pushed them back. One minute, Taurus shouted, his voice rising in excitement. We're almost there. Keep it up, just a little longer, I urged, firing at the last remaining Lyrian ships. Suddenly, an explosion rocked the cockpit, and the ship shuddered violently. I struggled to maintain control as alarms blared around us. Status report, I shouted, my heart racing. Shields down to 15%, Jansen yelled panic creeping into his voice. We need to get out of here. Hold on, I gritted my teeth, maneuvering the endeavor with all my strength. We're not leaving until that depot goes up. Ten seconds, Torres shouted, urgency filling his voice. I gripped the controls tightly, my heart pounding in my chest. The countdown continued, and I felt a rush of adrenaline as we fought to hold our ground. Five seconds, Jansen warned, sweat beating on his forehead. Almost there, I shouted, my pulse quickening. The moment hung in the air, suspended in time as we braced for the inevitable. Three, two, one. The supply depot erupted in a blinding explosion, a shockwave rippling through space. I felt the force slam into the endeavor, and for a moment, everything went white. As the explosion enveloped the supply depot, a blinding flash of light consumed the view ahead. For a moment, I felt weightless, the world around us reduced to a haze of brilliance. Then came the shockwave, crashing into us with a force that shook the endeavor to its core. Hold on, I shouted, bracing myself against the controls as the ship shuddered violently. Alarms blared in a cacophony of sound, but amidst the chaos, I could hear the frantic voices of my crew. Status report, Mitchell yelled. His voice strained. Shields are down, Taurus replied, his hands flying over the console as he fought to stabilize our systems. We've lost propulsion in the aft thrusters. Damn it, I cursed, forcing myself to concentrate through the disorientation. Engage auxiliary thrusters. We need to get out of here now. I gritted my teeth as I fought with the controls, willing the endeavor to respond. The ship lurched forward, still functional but barely hanging on. Jansen, can you scan for any remaining Lyrian ships? I asked, my voice tensed. We need to know if there are any left in the area. On it, Jansen said, his brow furrowed as he focused on the scanners. There's a few stragglers, but most of their fleet is in disarray. 
Looks like our reinforcements really did the job. I took a deep breath, relief flooding me. We need to regroup and assess the damage, get us to a safe distance from the blast zone. As we maneuvered away from the wreckage, the sight of the supply depot's remnants sent a wave of exhilaration through me. We had done it, we had crippled the Lyrian war effort and secured a crucial victory for humanity. Reinforcements are on our tail, Mitchell said, a hint of a smile breaking through his earlier tension. Looks like we won this round. The hull vibrated beneath us as our fleet moved in, joining the endeavor in a formation around us. I felt a sense of camaraderie swell within me, the bond forged through the heat of battle stronger than ever. Send a status report back to command, I ordered, my heart racing with a thrill of victory. Let them know we're still operational and heading for a secure location. As Torres complied, I glanced at my crew, their faces lit with determination. We had faced down impossible odds, and we had emerged victorious. Just then, the comms buzzed to life, and I recognized the familiar voice of our fleet commander. Endeavor, this is Commander Hale. We received your distress signal and saw your attack on the supply depot. Excellent work. We'll be heading to your location for a full assessment. Thank you, Commander, I replied, my heart swelling with pride. We sustained some damage, but we're still operational. We'll await your arrival. Good to hear, Hale continued. We'll conduct repairs and gather intel on the Lyrian response. For now, take a moment to catch your breath. You've earned it. As I leaned back in my chair, a wave of exhaustion washed over me. We had fought hard, faced danger head on, and now we were finally safe. All right, team, I said, my voice steady. Let's take a moment to regroup and recover. We've got a long fight ahead of us, but today we made a difference. Cheers erupted in the cockpit, a chorus of relief and triumph. We had each other's backs, and together, we could take on whatever challenges lay ahead. In the days that followed, we received extensive repairs and debriefings. The crew of the Endeavor had become a family, bound by the fires of battle and the thrill of victory. As we prepared to return to the front lines, I knew our next mission would come soon. But for now, we celebrated our success reveling in the knowledge that we had pushed back the Lyrian threat. And as I stood with my crew, gazing out at the stars, I felt an overwhelming sense of pride. We were humanity's defenders, and no matter the odds, we would fight for our future. With determination and resilience, we would continue to soar among the stars, ready to face whatever challenges awaited us.